in today's video, man, I need to talk to men and women. In today's video, we're talking about how you can avoid a fatal attraction as a man or a woman. Let's talk about it. Praise to the Most High Yah Shalom. Thank you for tuning in to another Righteous Spiritful episode. Today I'm back at an in them trenches handling that kingdom business. Man, this video is gonna be hard for some men and women to hear, to digest, to palate, to stomach. But if you can receive what I'm saying, man, there's a lot of wisdom behind just this video in itself and all praise to the Most High Yah. Man, a fatal attraction is an attraction that ends in catastrophic failure. It ends in destruction. There is no survival. The union, the relationship won't survive because it is fatal. You hear people talk about somebody fatally died. We're talking about attraction in that same sense. When I say this is for men and women, this is gonna help a lot of people out. But before I go any further, man, I need you to smash that like button. Help me to beat this algorithm to be able to reach those that are struggling out there and they're not getting any wisdom from a pure or divine place. You know, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And if you're new, welcome. I thank you for tuning in. And I don't know how long you'll be tuned in for this journey, but I hope in this part of your journey, I can say something that'll help you out and give you a little bit more understanding. And you take what I'm saying and apply it to your life. All praise to the most high. Lastly, man, drop a comment down below. Let me know where you're representing out of. You know, let me know of some topics that you might want me to cover because I will address them if I have some wisdom, you know, to put on. Fatal attraction. Man, let me tell you, man, no matter how many of your prerequisites or no matter how much of your checklist a man meets, the Most High Yah does have some criteria that husbands must meet. No matter how fine this woman is, no matter how big her booty is, no matter how big his digging stick or his sex is, no matter how much money he has, no matter how freaky she is, the biggest mistake that you can make as a man or a woman, and it often leads in fatal attraction is you try to take a man or a woman that does not meet any of the prerequisites or requirements of being a wife or a husband and you force them into that box and you know there's only one exception to the rule being that in the word, we see that the sanctified wife can cover the unbelieving husband and the sanctified husband can cover the unbelieving wife. But even that in itself is still going to be struggled. That's not gonna be uh, an easy journey. It's gonna be filled with all kind of spiritual warfare and I don't recommend you to approach what I'm saying based upon this because you're gonna find out 
that it ends in a fatal attraction. You know, it, it, it goes, say for instance, if a man takes a woman who doesn't have wife characteristics, but she likes to stay in the street, she likes to smoke weed, she's, she's really not any uh, about anything. And in your mind, you move her over to this category of, oh yes, that's wifey. Wait a minute. This is a woman that doesn't meet any of the prerequisites, you know, doesn't have any of the skill sets. And when I say it's fatal, here you are as a man pouring in to this woman in a place that she never wanted to be. And keep in mind, what you need to understand is you can very ignorantly force people into boxes but if you look at the fruit of their life and the lack thereof and the type of fruit that they produce, you would see that, man, you don't have no business putting that type of woman in a wife category. But we do this ignorantly trying to make an exception to the rule and then it ends in catastrophic failure and then as men were all tore up as to, man, how could she do me like this? Wait a minute. The onus was on you. The fact is, by you putting her in that box in your head that she is wifey, by you exalting her, man, that's not where she was in her life. She's carrying out some of the same actions that she was when you met her. You know, men often say, man, you cannot turn a hoe into a housewife. You know, you can't turn a sexually immoral man into a husband. You can't put them in that category. So, uh, you know, what you do as a man ignorantly, you know, is you take this woman who is used to being outside of the house. She's not a homebody, doesn't like to keep the house, rather be in the street, rather be having fun, rather be doing all of this. And now you put her in the confines of a house. Y'all forbid you plant a seed in this woman. Two, three years, four years has gone by. And she's now in her mind, let me break this down. In her mind, one day she desires to be a wife. But at the present moment when you met her, she was not actively working on, uh, you know, meeting those parameters via the Bible. You know, meeting those prerequisites, she wasn't focused on that moment. And once you realize what I'm saying as a man and stop doing this, man, you will be able to accept a woman where she is and be able to move on. You won't take it so hard because just because you feel like she's a good woman, just because you feel like she's wifey, we have to apply some wisdom to that. We have to apply some logic to that. You know, you're trying to put a woman in a box of a wifey and nobody for three generations in her family was able to survive that box. There's a reason why, maybe they didn't fit in it. Women, I want you to hear me out because this is going to hit you the hardest. You know, no matter how much, you know, you can follow these women telling you to follow hypergamy and all of this. And he was successful and he was a CEO and, you know, he, you know, he spoiled me. But I, I'm here to tell you, man, that, that that's a fatal attraction. You know, that's not a union that the most high y'all would bless. And a lot of these men you know, you should take it for face value where they are in their life instead of trying to empty out a cup into a man that really doesn't want to receive your game but will go along for the ride. And then at the end of the ride, your life is wrecked and damaged and, you know, you didn't miss out on your youth because you tried to take a man that you know, you had to consistently tell he needs to get a job. He really don't want to work. This man is stuck in trying to manifest his dreams, but on a day-to-day -day basis, he's actionless. He's lazy. 
You know, this man has so much unaccounted for time. This man, uh, you know, says he loves you, but can go three and four days without talking to you, without no excuse. And then when you ask like, hey, what you been doing? He got all kind of flim fam. That's the worst thing you can do is take a man that's a player. Take a man in the state of his trauma. Same thing with a woman. Take a woman in the state of her trauma that hasn't been healed, that's not meeting those prerequisites and put them in this box of that's my husband. It doesn't matter how tall he is, man. It doesn't matter what kind of car he drives. Doesn't matter what those lips say. Look at the word says, by their fruit, you shall know them. Some of these people are not producing good fruit. They're bad trees producing bad fruit. And you have to accept that, man, humbly. You know what? I'm not saying that this man or woman is one day not gonna meet these prerequisites, the basics. And they don't have to, you think about it, if you can find somebody that meets 70% of the, the prerequisites of the most high yacht and is striving to complete the rest of them, man, that's somebody that wants to be in that box. But what 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 happens is we try to grade on a curve. You know, he, he's worthless today, but I'm gonna give him a check mark on that box and he's not gonna be worthless tomorrow. And you're gonna find out the hard way, women, uh, a man like this that you force into this box because you want him to be your husband, the most high y'all may not have that same that same plan. And it's gonna be a lot of tribulation, a lot of turmoil. It's a fatal attraction. You know, uh, and here's the thing. You take a man and because of your trauma and teaching lack thereof, you say, well, that's my, that's going to be my baby daddy. You trying to put them in a box, but that box got all kind of, all kind of holes in the perimeter. That's a bad box to try to put a man into initially, especially you're putting him in a box that's out of order. So you'll try to put a man into, oh, that's my baby daddy. Oh, he's so fine. I'll let him have my kids. But you got to understand, man, that man is out here spreading seed lawlessly and you thought he's going to be loyal to you just because you thought it doesn't mean that's going to be the reality of how that doggone fatal attraction is going to end. It's all going to end in catastrophe. And, and here's the thing. People have done this and they try to do patchwork. They try to do patchwork. And like I said, man, you know, if you got one person that's genuinely good in a relationship that's forcing somebody that's not good to be in a box they don't want to, their actions are going to be unbecoming of the box that you want them in as a husband or a wife and they're gonna when you're not around they're gonna slowly be trying to fight themselves to get up out of that box a lot of these women that you want to be housewives they're gonna be itching to be in these streets the same thing with these men that you want to be home spending time with the family he never had that from the get-go he never had that from the jump she never had that from the jump so I'm telling you this so you'll be able to literally assess where people are. You know, I don't even need to put this man in a husband category because I'm not seeing the fruit. I'm not seeing good fruit. All I'm seeing is bad fruit, contrary to how fine he is, contrary to how fine she is, how freaky she is, you know? And oftentimes fornication is gonna cloud your judgment and you try to build a relationship off of fornication and that doesn't work. That doesn't work. That does, the most high yacht was never a part of that. And you try to tell yourself, man, this is this person is a is a is is my blessing and and and, and the most high yacht sent them. But look, did the most high yacht is gonna send you somebody that's gonna commit you to sin? So I want you to think about all this stuff we're saying, and you will realize, man, even your own, you know, when you start looking at fatal attractions in families, why families fall apart, like why siblings don't talk, man, you have to accept people where they are in that moment. If you, if you're putting a, uh, a, a, a drug addict in the box of, well, they're supposed to be clean and sober. They don't meet those prerequisites. These people are struggling with lawlessness, accept them where they are. It's all right to hope that one day they get it together. But one thing you're not going to do is it, it, play the victim after you force somebody to be in a box that you know good and well they didn't meet the qualifications. You knew that man didn't have no job. You knew that man's credit was jacked up. You knew that man didn't take care of his kids. Man, you know that woman had a child that 
uh, she gave up for a doctor. You know, like there's so many different prerequisites. You know that woman was a, a, a stripper and you tried to take her up out of there because in your lust, in your sin, you know, you, you thought you could uh, shape her into a wife. No, so don't be surprised when you find out later down the road, she's still doing private dances, telling you that she's at the grocery store. Man, she's being the same person she was back then before you tried to, uh, you know, grade on a curve and put her in that box. Same thing. The same thing he's doing to you in that relationship, he was doing when you met him. You know, there's a reason he's going out uh, and dropping it off in the drawers of other women. But that's been his whole, that's been his whole playbook. And once you uh, acknowledge what I'm saying, man, you, you won't try to force these things on people. You won't try to force people that have fruit of being worthless. You won't try to push success on them. You'll let them be. Because at their moment, man, at that present state of their life, they're happy being the man or woman that they are. And no matter how much you sit and try to counsel them and make them feel guilty, they really don't care. And it's only to leave you uh, the one wondering how did you get into this situation of fatal attraction? You know, some mothers and fathers, only thing they can do is help give you the gift of life. Outside of that, man, you gotta accept them where they are. That's, I mean, that's where they are. You cannot put them in the, the box of being a righteous, uh, set apart, yah fearing father or mother. What, what about their life when they tell you about what they was doing when they had you shows you that? You, it, it's one thing to hope that they seek the most high Yah's face, but I want you to think, when we think about what the book says, a lot of people won't turn from their sins to seek the most high Yah's face and humble themselves. And for that reason, man, you should be able to take what I'm giving you today and not only avoid fatal attraction, but be able to navigate some of these situations that you're going through as a man or a woman. Close to the Yah Ministries, kicking it, gun, barrel, straight. Wow.